Hello brothers and sisters, my YouTube family. Um, rapture is coming soon, pretty soon. I can hear it in my voice, I sound sarcastic. Um, the rapture, the second coming of the Lord, isn't something I mean to mock in any way, because He's coming, there's no doubt. It's written. I'll read it to you. Um, <clears throat> but I've got a problem. I got a problem with this rapture soon we fly soon raptures on the 18th follow this follow that scare here scare there oh I'm excited oh I'm disappointed I don't know Are they gonna take my pet I don't know I don't know it's not what I see okay it's not what I see being told of us to do either we're not told to be sitting here freaking out about this rapture you guys just not um, without sounding rude which it's kind of rude what I'm going to say but you're being selfish you're worrying about you you're worrying about your um, physical well-being over and above the souls of the lost brothers and sisters of the Lord out there <clears throat> and I'm not trying to be more holy than you just telling you the way I see it we're being selfish if we're not willing to put ourselves out there for them like didn't Jesus say something about a true friend is the one that will die for his other for the other you know and I really I like I got to the point now where I hope I'm here at the end there's a little piece of me that's scared of the affliction and pain that I may have to go through might be horrifying but I don't know the Lord might just give me the strength and power to get through it he might do the Shadrach Meshach and Abednego thing I don't know well, I doubt that though he says he'll will be afflicted but <clears throat> I just wanted to clear things up because everybody's going no 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 you're reading that wrong or no it's right here the bride and all right well pre-tribulation rapture rests on four basic verses I think it's Revelations 8 1 or something like that somewhere in Revelations which that one I'm not sure which one that is because I don't even care anymore um, I'm sorry but really the ones in Revelations match this so it doesn't matter um, in first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 which is the famous one 416 but it actually you should start it um, 15 right but Thessalonians this is Paul speaking right okay so Paul is telling them for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord okay okay <clears throat> the word trump in that verse is oh I went to the beginning what happened there oh I moved my phone around the word trump and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise for his trump is G4536 in the strongest concordance Greek I can't even try to say those letters the transliteration is cell cell pinks cell pinks cell pinks cell pinks something like whatever um the definition and it says perhaps from g4535 the word before through the idea of quavering or reverberation a trumpet Trump and then it's got in quotation marks dash et so it's a trumpet without the et it's still a trump is a trumpet the King James verse 
version usage. Trumpet is used nine times with that word, and that word, as in this verse, trump is used as a trumpet, but it's the same word, cell pignics, whatever that is. Okay? So trump and trumpet are the same word in Hebrew and Greek and stuff, okay? Only is different in English. And only in two verses in the King James is it trump instead of trumpet. In both places they actually mean trumpet. That's what the Biblical Scholar Guide tools say. Alright, so that's 1 Thessalonians 4 verses, or verse 15 to 17 basically. 18, wherefore comfort one another with these words. We should be comforted. We do know he's coming. Okay. We know that whether we're dead or alive, when he comes, we get to go to heaven. It doesn't matter if we die first or if we're still alive when he comes here, we get taken up right after the dead. So comfort one another with these words. The next chapter of this goes on to tell us how to live our lives. So anyway, all right, that's Thessalonians. <clears throat> there was also the first Corinthians, right? 15, 51 or 52. So if we go there, at 51 it says, <clears throat> Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, which means trumpet for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised the incorruptible and we shall be changed for this incorruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality all right then so I would think so far we're gonna probably agree that those two are the same rapture moment in time being explained in two different verses by Paul then Jesus Christ was asked by his disciples Lord how will we know <clears throat> tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world and Jesus answered them and said unto them, and this is Matthew 24, starting at 3. Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that these things, see ye not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. We're there right now. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. He's not talking to those twelve guys. They said, how will we know when the end of the world comes, when your return is? And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because sin shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Endure? Keep loving your neighbor and love God, right? Following those commandments. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Right? When ye therefore see, so when we can see the abomination of desolation 
spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place? Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea, not America, flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight not be in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Right? This is talking about Jerusalem. They're telling them when to flee. Israel, right? <clears throat> For then... See, all this other stuff's already happened. We've been given up to be afflicted and killed. All kinds of stuff has already happened. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. So this is the great tribulation he's speaking of. And except that those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, the false uh, Messiah they're going to announce, right? For there shall fall, arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not the Messiah in the inner rooms, right? For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Everybody gonna know. For wherever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heavens shall be shaken. And then shall the appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven heaven with power and great glory and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other heaven including the dead first and then those of us who are still here These are the words of Jesus Christ describing exactly his return and what must happen first. And there's a lot of and thens, including immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun and be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from the heavens and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heavens. And then shall all the tribes, that says the sign of the Son of Man, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels before him, and with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect, rapture them from the four winds all this stuff has to happen first though all that stuff it's a lot of stuff right it's the seventh trumpet
part of this really breaks my heart, you know, because I, I have people that I love dearly as, as brothers and sisters in the Christ, in the Christ, in, I was going to say in the Lord or in Christ, and, um, I don't know, I, I hope I'm wrong, right? I hope for them, well, I only hope for them, I really do, I don't hope for me that I'm wrong, I hope for me that I'm right. I hope I've got right up until the very last day when Jesus comes to try to hopefully share his truth with someone else. One more, you know, just one more. I don't know. To me that makes sense. Because why? I, God tells me, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. 200 sometimes he tells me to fear not. So why shouldn't I go into the great freaking tribulation and fear not? Demon armies, raw. Yeah, God. Jesus bombs. Why not? He who endures to the end shall the same shall be saved. It says, and I looked up the word saved, and the definition of the word saved there is protected. Let's look. Let's look now because I have. I'm in Matthew. I can find it. Right. I got the Strong's open. Let's look up that verse saved. You got me all choked up. Where was it? Come on, guys. Chip into the into the chat. I pretend I'm going to look so I don't have a chat open. I'm just recording on my phone thing. Right here. Um, 24.13. Matthew. I still love, guys, if you don't have one, um, you got to download the... Uh, the Bible apps, like with the concordance and lexicon, go digging into your words and verses. It's they are awesome tools, and they're just there for free. I mean, sure, they get all your personal information through your phone, but everybody else has got that already anyway. Okay, shall be saved is G forty nine eighty two, which is the word sozo, which is to save. That is to deliver or pro literally or figuratively to heal preserve save do well be whole be or make whole protect and this is just the strong's concordance i used to use the greek lexicon to which if you look up the verse it'll tell you what um, the meaning of that word was used in that verse if there's like separate meanings for an individual word right and in that, that verse right there it means protected so he who endures to the end shall be protected not salvation saved it's not like you got to endure to the end to get saved all right so that tells me there's somebody that's saved that's enduring to the end in my point of view like and i can be wrong i definitely can i don't think i am i really don't think i am um and the ones in Revelation so we'll get given up to the beast to be made war with and we will be overcome just like here it says you'll be given up you'll be afflicted and killed I don't see why we wouldn't whole body of Christ thing well everybody's the body of Christ all Christians all of the ones that have been murdered for their faith so far martyred murdered yeah they're all body of Christ too, guys. So why would he beat them up for 6,000 years and then keep us unbruised for the last six days and then show up for the wedding supper and try to look like a hero? No. We're to be given up, to be afflicted and killed in his name. Um, he did the same for us. He gave his body up to be horribly afflicted. And then he was killed. And this is after he drank the cup of God's wrath. Yes, we're not appointed to God's wrath. You're right, we're not. Thank you, Jesus. He's the one that took our wrath from God. And after this seventh trumpet blows right here, they start pouring out those wrath vials on the earth. <clears throat> Might want to read the book of Joel. I'll wake you up. That battle's after we're caught up to be with him. Now here's something else, because I've heard this being discussed a lot. Um, he comes back, it says, with 
tens of thousands of his saints or his angels in two different places or something like that. I've heard it was angels. But we're caught up to be with him as he comes back, right, on the clouds. Then we're caught up to be with him. Everybody sees him coming on the clouds with his angels. So if the dead from one end of heaven to the other and the living elect from one end of heaven to the other, all of the saints are gathered up at the same time when he already showed up with somebody I'm thinking it's the angels right and we're caught up to meet with him and be with him forever that's just a side note it's got nothing to do with rapture it's just it was a conversation I was in the other day and I noticed here that part about where at the end we all go up to be with and join him where he's already there on the cloud so I don't see here anywhere where it says he comes alone, we show up and make a mighty army for him. I don't see that. I see he shows up with his mighty army and we're caught up to be with him. That's what I see. <clears throat> now guys, I love you guys. All of you, even the ones that don't like me. That's okay too. Um, and I don't do this to hurt you. I don't do this to win an argument. I don't do this to be right. I do this because I believe this is the truth. I believe this is the truth that God showed me, and I believe it 100%. I, I believe this. If I didn't believe so strongly that this is the truth, I wouldn't keep this up because, like, everybody I know pretty much is 99 to 95% of everybody I know is pre-trib rapture, and I'm not making any extra friends saying, no, 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 no. Next week isn't going to be the week. Sorry, that's not, not what's written. I'm not making no friends, you know. Um, if I wanted good views, I'd probably do like a nice disciple video or a Brenda Welzer video or, you know, maybe a, oh, I love you family Chelsea video and tell you all that we're going to fly soon because somebody had a dream. Um, what I'm telling you is that I haven't seen a whole lot of these signs that Jesus Christ said must happen first. And then after that happens, and then, and then, and then, and then, with the loud sound of a trumpet, he'll send his angels out. We'll know. We'll, everybody will know that's him. And then, he'll send his angels out. But that's after the dark sun and all that stuff, guys. So, I just want my brothers and sisters in Christ, mostly, and I've been rude about how people shouldn't be just sitting around waiting to be saved. I find that almost offensive in a way. Um, sorry, I just do. But, we're told to be sharing the gospel, and we're told to be making disciples. And this whole thing, some people get excited, the other people get scared and anxious. Those are not of God. So me, personally, I can't see why he would do this, you know, it doesn't make sense. He says nobody's going to know the hour, what does that tell us? Quit looking and trying to figure out what hour it's going to be. Just be ready every day, all day, every day. Mm -hmm. Take every thought captive. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Um, love your fellow man. Share the gospel. Make disciples. He does have verses somewhere where it tells us not to chase these things, you know. So, I mean, discussion's cool. Fellowship's cool. But don't put your life into this. Waiting because somebody says it's on this Feast of Trumpets next week. Really? Didn't he just read... They're going to say, I'm over here, I'm over there. He's not over there. They said, how do we know when you're coming? He said, all of this stuff's going to come to pass. Then I'll be here. And when he comes back, it's after these great, all these great tribulations, it says, after all these great tribulations, he says, then I'll come. 
and then he's going to pour out the wrath of God's judgment on man. Luckily for us, he drank our portion. And so we are not appointed to God's wrath. Period. Doesn't mean we're not appointed to his judgment. We're still human. Were you perfect? I wasn't. So I don't know how it works. Um, I know Peter, Paul, all them guys. They got whooped. Hardcore. Afflicted and killed for Jesus. I'm his disciple too. Why should I expect that he's going to come and rapture me away? Just because I consider myself the bride of Christ. I also consider myself the body of Christ. And the body was afflicted horribly and then killed. And then he got to go see the Father. So. That's my view on the rapture. I guess I'd have to say I'm... Um, I'm not pre-trib, I'm not post-trib, and I'm not mid-trib. <laughs> I'm two-thirds trib, because it says the end of the seals, then at the end of the trumpets, right? So that's two-thirds, but all that's left after that is the vials of wrath. And like I said, check out the book of Job, that ain't going to be cool. It's going to be a very horrible time for whoever is left on earth. But at that time, don't forget, what's left on earth, a lot of it's very evil. The pits of hell would have been opened. All those demon locust things are going to be out there. Probably Nephilim or whatever. All these lost demon spirits. Who knows how, how it's going to end up. Like maybe all of the people left are going to end up being possessed by demons. Who knows, right? We don't know. The battle at the end sounds pretty freaky, though. But, anyway, that's... um. That's my rapture view. It's not popular. But, um, to me, I believe it's very scriptural. It reads right here what has to happen before he comes to rapture us. So, <clears throat> I think I'll just leave it with that. Ah, wait. What was that other one? What was the first one? Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians 5. What am I at? 27 minutes? Everybody leaves after 4 minutes anyway. This is the Corinthians one. Where's the Thessalonians one? Come on, Kev. Oh. Let's just have a little look. Because chapter 416, the rapture one, man, chapter 5 is so nice, you know. It's just a good chapter. Let's just read it. Um, let's start at 9. Well, let's start a little bit before that. Uh, let us, but let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. So, being in Jesus, we don't get the wrath, right? Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you. It says, accept biblical correction. And that says to all of us, I'm not telling you. I get told when I tell you. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace amongst yourself. Now, we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, and support the weak. Be patient toward all men. Ah, I need that one. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, 
but ever follow that which is good, both amongst yourselves and to all men. See, you know, there's... I got in a self-defense argument with Phil from Unashamed Podcast. You're not allowed to just go shoot them with your AR-15, Phil, sorry. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both amongst yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesyings, and prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, and also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss, or brotherly. I charge you by the Lord that this is a that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. So there's a little something for any of you guys that um, are asking people, or people are asking. You know, I've seen it lately, and I didn't have a good answer for them. And they're like, "Well, what scripture should I start in in the New Testament? What should I read?" Jeez, I charge you by the Lord. Right? That means I'm telling you, in the name of the power and authority given by the Lord to that man, Paul, that this epistle, this writing, First Thessalonians, be read unto all the holy brethren. That's a big command. That means that it's to be read to every believer. So, First Thessalonians is important. So it's probably a good one also, and it's nice and short, right? So for a new new believer, something like First Thessalonians, I mean, it's a it's an amazing, beautiful book. So, and it's a very good one, you know. It's a very good book to start. Maybe we'll do a a reading on the whole chapter or something. All right, you guys, I love you, and I I really I really love you, and I hope, I truly hope that I'm helping people um, to be ready uh, and not worry about it. Don't worry, fear not, he says, right? In all things, give thanks. Don't worry about it. Don't stress out. Put it in God's hands. He will get you through it, right? He's always there with us, no matter what it is. If it's horrible or bad, he's still there for us to reach out to, right? So, love your neighbor, love the Lord, share Thessalonians with new believers, with every brethren, it says. Um, that's about it, I guess. I love you guys, and I hope you have a great day.